it's a zombie apocalypse. You're stuck in your apartment with no way out and the Wi-Fi doesn't work. Do you think you're gonna survive? Because I don't. In this video, I'll be breaking down the mistakes made in Hashtag Alive because there is no way anyone should have survived this zombie apocalypse. John Woo wakes up to find his family is out of the home, so he does what he always does, live streams and plays games with his friends. Except they tell him to get off and watch the news, because everywhere in Korea, people are attacking each other, and a state of emergency has been declared. Okay, first things first, this guy's obviously a gamer, so he might have some in-game knowledge about surviving. Gamers may be cowardly in real life, but their gamer instincts could go a long way in an outbreak. Already John Woo can see right outside his window how people are freaking out. Waves of people are running out of their apartments, and already we're seeing signs of zombies, people biting each other, leaping, running. This is all happening pretty quickly. In this specific case, don't join the crowd, stay behind. Let them draw as many zombies out from your area as possible, giving you the chance to live and an opportunity later to escape with less zombies on the loose. Also, there's no time for hugs in the apocalypse. Why do people do this? Maybe she didn't know she would turn, but even still, Run, damn it! Jun Woo decides to take a peek outside of his door, and his next door neighbor comes rushing in. No warning, he's just subtly inside the apartment and is begging Jun Woo to let him stay. His brother got bit, he escaped, and Jun Woo's having none of this. He's telling this guy to get out and go away, but he lets his neighbor stay long enough to use the bathroom. As the guy's there though, Jun Woo hears on the news the symptoms of zombification bleeding from the eyes, becoming violent, and wanting to eat people. It gets Jun Woo's thinking, and he immediately grabs a knife. As his neighbor comes out of the bathroom, Jun Woo spots a bite mark on his hand and forces him out at knife point. But the man stops. As he reaches the door, he begins to turn. Look, it doesn't take a genius to figure out bite equals bad. So when a guy wants to stay in your house, which you obviously should never do, at the very least, make him take his clothes off and prove he has no bites on him. Not gay if it saves your life. I mean, the guy's got blood on his shirt. You might have better chances of survival, but if he won't show you, you gotta go for the knife. Violently jerking and cracking, the new zombie rushes at Jun Woo, who gets him to like a bear hug and pushes him out of the house, where another zombie beats the crap out of him. That night, Jun Woo blocks the front door with a fridge and tries to make a call, but he can't connect to anyone. A news report on TV suggests survivors make sure they have enough food for 60 days, and Jun Woo starts to tally up what he has, though it doesn't look like he has enough for even 10 days. Beer will tie you over for a little while, and nobody will be delivering your favorite barbecue chicken. Once you've locked down your house, the first thing to do is ration what you have left for as long as you can. Then, devise a strategy for getting more food safely. If you have any fruit, keep the seeds and plant them in flower pots. Water will soon be gone, so I'd fill all my containers and tubs with tap water to drink. This might be time for a more long-term solution, or at least until it rains. Begin cardio endurance training immediately. Gamers are not world-renowned for their fitness. Social media is great, but here, it gets a kill. The next day, he gets inspired to check out Instagram, where people are posting, calling for help and telling others where they are, as calls still aren't connecting. It's time to use your tech for survival and not for likes. The guy figures out that by attaching his phone to a drone, he can fly it high enough to get service. He gets a signal and it actually works. The call goes through until he runs out of batteries. Charge your batteries first, come on, man. Scouting out the area is the only way to know when and how to get out of your flat. You'll be able to use this to observe your neighbor's houses to pick your best future scavenging sites. It's not inconceivable to rappel yourself down or climb onto balconies if you know there aren't immediate threats inside. That night, a policewoman runs through his neighborhood, drops her gun, and gets bitten. Even as Jun Woo tries to distract the zombies, he can do nothing but watch as they take her. A drop gun on the streets might be enough to lure some outside, but it's a terrible idea. You have no idea how many bullets are left, so it could leave you dead. Also, screaming out your windows will piss off your neighbors especially the ones with anger problems. How the hell did this guy even get inside? This big one somehow lumbers its way in, and it's only by hanging from his balcony railing does Jun Woo trick the zombie into falling to its death. Clever, but risky. I would have gone for the knife. There's no way to know the zombie would have flown off the balcony without some movie magic. It could easily have been you lying there with your head bashed in. 
The best solution here is to face off, fight it, and aim for the head. He fills in the door to make it more secure and starts the first in a series of logs recording his experiences. It's day seven, and Junwoo learns that the zombies infect others through the blood and that they keep some of their memories like opening doors or windows. He's also desperate. The water in his unit no longer works, and he's downing bottles of whiskey and beer like his liver can afford it. While some might think this is irresponsible, we should acknowledge the stress involved. As far as solutions go, whiskey is among the best out there. We're not just staying alive, we're trying to survive. That means a little fun can go a long way. Still, this desperation doesn't stop Jun Woo from taking some safety precautions by covering and taping his windows up. This might seem like a good idea, but you've taken away your ability to observe your environment and the zombies themselves. I would be conducting experiments to learn more about them, what they respond to, are they out at night, what are their habits, anything I can think of to gain the upper hand. In a zombie apocalypse, ignorance is not bliss, it's death. On day 10, he finds out there's a phone app that could let him call using FM waves, but he needs a specific audio jack, which he doesn't have. On day 15, Junwoo gets a voice message from his dad, but he still can't get a signal to listen to it. He hangs up the balcony to go reception, grab the attention of these zombies who start crowding down below him. It's like dinner and a show. This gives me a great idea. Find the most indestructible object in your house and as much string as you can find. Shoelaces, knotted bed sheets, throw it at the zombies below, aiming to crush their heads and reel it back up. You can take them out one by one until you've cleared as many zombies from the area as possible. Never mind, this is better. Let's just swing this whole survivor thing. Looks like all that gamer strategy flew out the window. He leaves his apartment, and when he cuts a corner, he sees his zombie fight neighbor crawling around. Why does he keep shouting? Adrenaline is good for killing, but don't use it to draw more attention to yourself, especially if you're using it to trash talk a zombie. And then more zombies show up, closing in on him from both sides of the complex. He goes through the elevator, but a whole crowd of zombies fall out. Also, elevators, very bad idea. I hate waiting for them in normal time. During a zombie apocalypse, I can't even. He sneaks his way back up and runs into this blind zombie, who Jun Woo is very careful not to alert, and then slams the door shut, attracting the zombie who tries to jiggle the handle to open the door. The zombie is impressive. No eyes, but tries the door handle? He must be the frickin' Albert Einstein of zombies or something. On day 20, the power plants in the city blow up everywhere. Buildings are losing electricity, and Jun Wu decides to finally give up. He tries to go out like Epstein by hanging himself, but as he's choking, someone shines a laser on him. He wriggles out of his noose and sees directly across from his building who was pointing the laser. This chick is Yu Bin, who is honestly a badass. She's very well prepared to survive with supplies, a good sense to ration what she has, and she's even set up a trap in front of her door in case something comes in. She has also been scouting the various floors in Junwoo's apartment, spotting which ones are full of zombies and which ones aren't. They tell each other their names, and Junwoo seems to think she's pretty cute. A note on the dating scene during a zombie apocalypse. There isn't one. But when cute girls start paying attention to you, it's best to keep things professional. Emotions cloud your judgment, so intimate relationships are not recommended. But if you are this bad at surviving, that's all the hope you've got. She sees that Junwoo is starving, so she tries tossing over a rope which absolutely fails. This rope falls to the streets, but Jun Wu uses his drone to fly over a cord, and now they're able to send food and goods to each other from apartment to apartment. The thing is, Yubin has sort of screwed herself over, because that rope that she tried to throw gets spotted by a firefighter zombie, which in any other zombie apocalypse is no problem, but zombies here retain some of their memories. Now this rope is connected to a table, and because it's being pulled, it violently knocks out Yubin. A climbing zombie is definitely a first, but it's not the time to be impressed. Your future ex-girlfriend is in serious trouble. And now's the time to figure out how to ruin everything fast. Jenwu does everything he can to distract the firefighter, shouting, throwing bottles, and he ends up using his drone, which the firefighter breaks. The drone is great thinking. It perfectly combines what you are good at and what you can use to immediately influence a situation. But I would have gone one step further and attached a knife to the drone. It might not be fast enough to stab it, but it would give your new friend a fighting chance if she didn't have a weapon. It's by sheer luck that Yubin gets up in time to cut off the firefighter's hand, setting it plummeting to the ground. Junwoo decides to gear up and go scavenging for food and other things, breaking into his next door neighbor's house, which is filled with food, walkie-talkies, mountaineering gear, 
and of course the dead body. Jun Woo checks to see who the body is, and it's a random woman, which is weird since his neighbor's brother was infected. So where is he? As soon as Jun Woo finds us out, the zombified brother attacks him, and it's only thanks to some quick thinking and luck that Jun Woo gets out. Sharing a walkie-talkie and Nutella with Yubin. The next day they notice that the zombies are suddenly running through both apartment complexes, and they don't know why. As Yubin goes to grab her hatchet, she accidentally knocks over a table. A whole conga line of zombies make their way to her room, but they get distracted as Jun Woo calls the landline of the unit next to Yubin's. The ringing of the neighbor's phone drawing away the zombie horde. Calling her neighbor's phone is smart, but it's life or death riding on one idea. Herds are a problem you can't solve in the moment. Your only option is to hide and draw no attention, but they can be avoided with some organization and planning. The best advantage is that you are in a building with sealable entrances. If you could start by clearing your floor and work with reliable neighbors to clear the building slowly, it's a realistic way to take back the building and barricade the main entrances. But if it's just too daunting a task, it's still worthwhile to create sound traps to distract zombies away from you. Pots and pans work well for this. Lower them to the floor below, attached to a string, and pull it when a distraction is required. They both decide that now's the only chance to get to the 8th floor and gear up. Jinwoo tries to coordinate and come up with a plan, but Yubin pulls a Mission Impossible, sliding down a rope from her balcony and making a mad dash to Junwoo's apartment. And she does an amazing job, by the way. She's bobbing and weaving, beating the crap out of any zombie with her climbing axe, but her ankle gets caught by a zombie, and she barely grabs the pistol that's been left out here as Junwoo comes down to help her. Jumping into a parking lot of zombies is a terrible idea, but if you must, don't try to kill them. All survival now depends on invasion, to move forward and out of the growing cluster of zombies where you can easily be trapped if spent hacking away at one. Football players would do well, golfers would not. The two survivors run back into Jun Woo's building and take the elevator to the 8th floor. The zombies stampede into the lobby. Upstairs, the doors to the apartments are locked and a whole mob of the undead finds the two humans. The two of them desperately try to unlock the apartments and are saved by this man who drags them inside his unit. He shares with them food and water and tells them supposedly there are teams of soldiers flying around the city to rescue people and there should be one arriving sometime soon. Great news for everyone if they're actually going to make it out alive. Yubin and Junwoo do everything right here. They wait until the guy drinks the water to see if it's dangerous and then they ask for canned goods which should have signs of being tampered with. Honestly, I don't think I'd do anything differently. But how exactly did the guy poison the food? This guy not only didn't have a lease in this unit, but he drugs and zip ties Jun Woo and Yu Bin, as he intends to feed them to his wife. No, she's not a cannibal, she's a zombified freak on a leash, who the man locks in a nursery room. There is no way she's getting out of here. But Jun Woo is able to wake up and threaten the man with a gun. He tries to get him to let Yu Bin out, but the man instead lets go of the leash, letting his zombified wife attack Yu Bin whose screams go totally silent. The kidnapper unlocks the door to find out what happened, only to find his wife being pushed out the door by Yubin, the zombie immediately latching onto her husband, biting and nibbling him as he apologizes to her, but not the two people he just tried to kill. Classy. Yubin uses one bullet to take out both of them and alerts the horde. Shooting a gun in a zombie apocalypse is dangerous, but if you had to use the gun, it would have been smarter to just shoot the guy. We're obviously not going to convince it to stop. If there's more than one bullet left in the gun, shoot the lock off and forget about the key. Every second is precious if you're trying to save your girlfriend from imminent face munch by zombie. She begs Jun Woo to take her out and he agrees, just about ready to blow her mind with his piece, when he hears what sounds like helicopters. Immediately, the two survivors rush to the rooftop, tearing past zombies and trying to slow down the mob. But by the time they get up there, no one is waiting. Now they're well and truly dead, as the zombies break through the door and bum rush them. There is no escape, and the gun just ran out of ammo. There is no way out, except as you probably figured out by now, there is. A helicopter with armed soldiers shows up out of nowhere, taking the two survivors aboard, where Junwoo begins to receive a signal on his phone, and finds out his family are still alive. Junwoo is just one of many Koreans who was saved, as everywhere throughout the city, survivors are posting to social media about where they are, and in turn, soldiers are coming to rescue them. And here I thought social media was useless. Who knew that it could save your life? But what do you think? Do you agree with my theories or do you disagree? Let me know with a comment down below. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and check out the playlist that's up on the channel. Until next time, 
Have a damn good day.